Welcome back guys, Andrew here from Aloha Quails. Today we're taking a look at the bone broth that we made in our last video. So we made five gallons of bone broth in one go and now we have to find a way to store it. So there's only a few options that you really have. You can refrigerate it, um, that gives you about a week to use it. Um, you know, for five gallons, we're not going to use that in a week. You can freeze it. Um, five gallons takes up a lot of freezer space that you could be using for um, other products. So, you know, the whole reason we made so much bone broth is because we had a lot of bones that were taking up freezer space. So I'm going to go ahead and take you through how I can my bone broth. Um, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about pressure cookers um, or pressure canners. So this is an all-American pressure canner. It's a metal construction. I like this style of canner because it doesn't have a gasket. So this is a metal on metal canner. So you can see here, there's a metal lip and you can see in the canner, it's a metal lip. That means that you're not having to replace a gasket. There's less chance of a leak. What you do have to be aware of is that you don't want to drop this or you don't want to ding it up because then you're not going to get a good seal. You're not going to reach pressure. And if you don't reach pressure, um, your food isn't going to be safe to store. You want to make sure that with your pressure cooker, your regulator is working. Um, if you're buying a used pressure cooker, what you want to do is take it to um, sometimes like welding shops or gas companies where they sell like propane gas or they sell other gases. They'll be able to check to make sure that regulator is calibrated correctly and that it's safe to use. You want to make sure that your release valve is clear and if your pressure cooker has a safety valve that it's functioning correctly. There's two types of safety valve. Um, there's a rubber button style like this. So this has a little rubber stopper in it that's set to pop out if it becomes too pressurized. And then there's also the sort of mechanical ones. Works in the same way when it gets to a high pressure, it releases gas so that it doesn't explode. So I will say, make sure you read your instruction manual for your canner. Every canner is different. Every manufacturer has different... Uh, guidelines on what to do when canning. Um, I know what mine are for my canner and that's what I'm going to follow today. Um, so when I mention times, when I mention pressures, um, make sure that you're following the instructions for your pressure canner to be safe. So the first thing you want to do with your canner is get it ready for canning. Um, that means that you need to make sure that you have the lift tray. So this goes in the bottom of the canner. You never want to have glass on um, you never want to have glass in contact with the bottom of your canner. The heat is too strong and it will crack your glass and then you're basically just wasting stuff. So this goes lip side down. So there's a gap underneath into your canner. And then for my canner, I need to add one and a half to two inches of water to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then we're going to move over to preparing um, the broth to be canned. So once your canner is set up, your next step is going to be to start preparing your broth. Um, we finished our broth and then what I did was I put it in the refrigerator overnight. This chills it down, causes all of the fat and oils to congeal and float to the top. So what I'm going to do is the first step is I'm just going to go ahead and scoop that off. So as you can see, all of the oil and fat has floated to the surface of our broth. So the first thing we're going to do is scoop all of that off. Um, so you're just going to very gently corral it all into one spot. Um, and then scoop it out and as you can see there's quite a lot in here um, it doesn't make up that much of the volume you're not losing anything from this um, but what you want to make sure you're doing is, is that you don't put this down your sink or down your drain um, it's going to congeal in your pipes and block your pipes and then you're just going to have plumbing problems so I'm going to go ahead and scoop all this out put it in a bowl and then we'll throw that away later Okay, so once you've gone ahead and you've scooped off the layer of fat that's going to be sitting on top of your chicken broth, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and heat it up and bring it to a boil. And you're going to keep it at a boil for at least three minutes um, before putting it in your jars. So whilst my broth is heating up, what I'm going to go ahead and do is prepare my jars. There's two schools of thought with regards to preparing the jars for pressure canning. One is the sanitization method where you boil your jars in boiling water and that's going to kill any germs and bacteria that are on them. The other school of thought is to use a good dish soap and hot water, go ahead and wash them, and then just put them in the canner. Um, the reason is, is the canner is going to boil the water that's inside, it's going to boil the food that's inside, and that's going to kill any germs and bacteria that are inside. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sanitize my jars in the way that I like doing it, and then I'll get back to you when I'm ready to start putting the broth inside the jars. 
Okay, so once you've got your broth boiling, you're gonna get your cans, um, get them ready, and you're gonna need a canning funnel, and this is gonna help um, pour everything into your jars and keep the rim of your jars nice and clean. I like to use a measuring cup. Same thing we did when we was making the broth. Um, it's just the easiest way you can get it in the pot, get most of your stuff out before pouring the last of it out by uh, just pouring the pot. So all you do is dip it in. And you're gonna fill your jars. So you wanna make sure you leave the correct amount of headspace. Uh, it does depend on your recipe and the size of jars that you're using. I'm using one quart jars, and for my recipe, it says to leave a one inch headspace. The headspace is the amount of space between the rim of the jar and where the liquid sits. So I'm gonna leave a one inch space in every jar, and that's gonna leave me enough room for the jars to seal correctly and for the liquid to not um, disrupt that seal. Okay, so that's my first jar filled. As you can see, it's sitting right below the uh, bottom rim of this jar, and that's the correct head spacing for my jars. So again, make sure you check your recipe for your head spacing. So I'll bring you in a little bit closer and show you how I fill the next one so you guys can see a little bit easier where that spacing is. Here you can see the jar is almost full, and you want to leave a one inch gap from the top of the jar to where the liquid is. Um, a lot of times your canning funnel will sit one inch into the jar. Most recipes require one inch of headspace. So a lot of the canning funnels are made to sit an inch into the, the jars that they're designed for. So that is the case in my case. It also happens to correspond with the bottom of the glass rim right here. So all I'm gonna do is just gonna fill that up to there. And there you go guys, that's how easy it is to fill your jars. So I'm going to go ahead and fill the rest of these and then we'll move on to starting the canner. Okay, so before you get them over to your canner, what you want to do is make sure you put your lids on. Um, before you do that, what you want to do is just wipe down the rim of the jar. And that's just going to remove anything that's on there. Even though we use the canning funnel, um, it's better to do it and not need it than need it and not do it. So with your lids, you want to make sure that you have your lids in hot water before you put them on your jars and the reason for that is that hot water is going to make the rubber gasket that's in your lids a little bit soft so it seals good you're going to place them on your jar make sure they're centered you're then going to take your ring and you're going to tighten it on the jar now you want to make sure that it's finger tight what that means is hold it with your fingers turn the jar and then when the jar starts to turn that means it's tight enough don't tighten it any more than that Otherwise, your jars aren't going to vent correctly, and then it's not going to seal right. And if you don't tighten them enough, um, the lids won't be seated down hard enough, and again, they won't seal correctly. So it's very important to get that uh, seating correct. So once you've got your stock in your jars, and you've got your lids tightened down, and everything's ready to go, you want to go ahead and put them in your canner. So make sure your canner is where you want it on your burner. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to put them in and you want to make sure that they're not touching the edges and the jars aren't touching themselves. So my canner will actually hold six or seven quart jars. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put five in. That's what we managed to get out of that batch of chicken broth was five quarts. So we're going to go ahead and get these in. And again, you want to make sure that you already have your water in your canner. You don't want to be putting the jars in and then adding water. So I've got my five jars in there, as you can see, they're spaced out. They're not touching each other. They're not touching the sides. Then we're going to go ahead and put the lid on. Putting the lid on most pressure canners, it looks a little bit daunting because of all the clasps and latches. It's really, really not that bad. Um, you're gonna make sure that if your lid has alignment arrows that you do align them correctly. So most canners, you put them on and then you give it about a quarter of an inch to an inch turn and that's gonna lock it in. Mine has these little latches. Um, they're a safety feature and it helps keep it aligned. And then you're gonna make sure that your lid is sitting evenly and then you're gonna go ahead 
put all of your latches up. Do not tighten them at this point. You want to make sure that you're tightening them equally and evenly. Okay, so here we are. My canner has eight latches. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you tighten them up equally. So you're going to go ahead and tighten each one so it's barely touching against the lid of your canner. And then what you're going to do is you're going to slowly tighten them up doing the ones opposite each other. So I'm going to tighten this one here first. And I'm going to tighten that all the way down. And then I'm going to tighten this one, which is the one directly opposite it. And then I'm going to do the next one. And then I'm going to do a cross from that diagonally. And then I'm going to do the back one. And I'm going to do the one across from that diagonally, which is the front one. So the lid is secure. Um, you have to make sure that this is done correctly and that it's done tight. Again, follow the instructions in your instruction manual. Um, safety first with pressure canners. Um, you know, they can be dangerous if misused. So once you've got your lid tightened down correctly, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and turn your heat onto high and you're going to leave it on high until you have a steady stream of steam coming out of your release nozzle. Um, once you've got that steam up, you're going to let it run for 10 minutes with a solid uh, you're going to let it run for 10 minutes with a solid stream of steam before you add your pressure weight okay guys so that's what you're looking for right there there's a constant stream of steam coming out of that valve right there and you're going to let that go for 10 minutes okay so once you've got a nice stream of steam coming out of your pot and you've waited the 10 minutes you're going to go ahead and add your jiggler What your jiggler does is it's a weight and it has a certain diameter hole in it and what that does is it allows the pot to build up pressure. Once you've added your jiggler, what you're going to do is you're going to wait for your pressure gauge to give you the correct reading. For me, it's 10 pounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down my heat and wait until the jiggler stops jiggling um, at a rate of about 3 to 4 times per minute. So about once every 10 to 15 seconds. Okay guys, so I turned the heat down on my pressure cooker to get my jiggler running um, at that four to six times a minute uh, rate that you need. Make sure again to follow the instructions in your instruction manual. Uh, mine says four to six times a minute is when it's gonna be at the correct pressure. You also can check on your pressure gauge to make sure that it's reading the correct pressure. Mine's reading at just a fraction over 10 pounds, which is exactly where it's supposed to be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my timer for 25 minutes and I'm going to keep it at pressure for 25 minutes before shutting off my heat. Okay guys, so once you've waited your 25 minutes, what you're going to do is go ahead and shut off your heat and let it cool down on its own. You're not going to remove your jiggler weight. You're just going to let it sit on there and the pressure will go down. It'll stop jiggling and you want to wait all the way until your pressure gauge reads zero. So there's no pressure left in there before opening it up. Um, again, make sure to follow the instruction manual that came with your pressure counter. So now let's go ahead and open my pressure cooker. Um, you always want to make sure that you stay just a little bit back. Um, I know this is empty already. I know there's no pressure in there, but that being said, is it's not worth the risk of leaning over it, opening it. Um, you want to go ahead and open your latches, leave your latches up in place. It does have a catch under here just in case there is pressure in there. Um, but that being said is it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, so I just heard the lid pop just slightly. Um, so I know that it is loose now. There's no pressure in there, otherwise it would have popped up really violently. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open these. And I'm going to go ahead and remove the lid, making sure to tip it towards me so that any steam that's in there goes away from me. Okay, so I'm going to bring you in so you guys can see the jars inside. Um, there you go. You can hear them venting steam right now. Um, so as the jars start to cool, it will contract the lid and that's going to seal the lids and hold them tight. So let me bring you in so you can see.
As you can see, I've got my five jars in here. Um, they're bubbling away still. The contents is extremely, extremely hot. You do not want to touch these um, with your hands. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let them cool inside the pressure canner. Um, I don't need to take these out. I'm not going to use this again today. Um, if you were, what you'd want to do is lift them out with a can lifter, making sure not to bang them, not to touch them. And you want to sit them on a flat surface um, i like to put a towel down so that they don't crank against it um, these jars because they're under pressure are very very fragile um, and banging them around could cause them to explode so i'm going to go ahead and leave these in here let them cool down and then once they've cooled down i'll show you what they look, look like in the morning and we'll show you the rest of the uh, broth that we made okay so it's the next morning everything's cooled down the only step that you have to do now is to go ahead and remove your canning ring you want to wash your glasses in warm soapy water just to remove any residue that's left on that outside and check to make sure that your cans are sealed. To check your cans, you're going to push down on the center and make sure that they don't pop. Um, like when you've opened like a jam jar, you can flex the lid up and down, you'll hear it go pop, 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 pop. That means it didn't seal good. Um, those ones, you want to put them in the fridge or you want to put them in the freezer and make sure you use those fast. And you want to make sure that you pull up on the rim and just make sure that there's nothing caught underneath it and that it is sitting completely over the jar. So there you go, guys. This is a quart of quail buff. So you can see how nice that color is. And then here is 21 quarts. That's what we got out of those the bone broth. That's what we ran through the canner. So we ran through 21 quarts of broth. Um, this is going to be our broth for as long as it lasts. Um, some of this will probably be given away, um, friends and family, um, but most of it will stay here. We'll use it for soups and whatever else my wife decides to use it for. So that's been how to can broth. Hey guys, don't forget to leave us a comment. Don't forget to like and do not, do not forget to subscribe. If you wanna see what videos come next, we have some more quail stuff going. We're working on uh, a new rabbit cage. We're working on some new quail cages. We've got a bunch of hatches going on. So if you guys wanna get those updates, don't forget to subscribe. And that way you'll get told when we make those videos and when they come out and you guys will get the opportunity to see them first. This has been Andrew from Aloha Quails. This has been Canning Quail Broth. We will see you next time.